In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of our feast day, celebration of the Annunciation of the Lord. It's a time when the angel Gabriel appears to Mary, and by her acceptance of God's will, her opening herself to that will of God. She plays a part in the great, great plan of God for all humanity. And we reflect that we too are in a time where we can turn to God and accept that presence of God into our lives. And so now, in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins and ask for the Lord's forgiveness and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Let us pray. O God, who willed that your word should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in his nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David. Is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats takes away sins. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings you took no delight. Then I said, as it is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, Christ says, sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of reading this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his David his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is a sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. 
May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the feast of our parish. And it's a feast we hope we all have a, would have had a big celebration. Everyone gathered here and snacks afterwards, but obviously things have happened that have gotten in the way of that. But what we are gonna do is celebrate today anyway. Celebrate a day that commemorates one of the greatest events of all time. On this day, God takes human flesh in the womb of Mary. On this day, a partnership is forged between God and humanity that was like nothing anyone could have expected. At this particular time, you know, we are probably worried and looking for something. When God promised to come and save humanity, no one thought it would be like this. No one thought he would do what he had done. In our worry today, we have to be able to and willing to place these situations in God's hand, realizing that God has plans in place we never could have dreamed of. In many ways, this feast is about changed expectations. Mary had a lot of expectations. She was engaged to Joseph, and she must have had a lot of plans about what her life was going to be after that. All of that changed with the visit of the angel. She now had a whole new set of things to expect, a whole new set of things she had to adjust to. She was going to have been a virgin, and now she's going to have a child. The life that was going to be pretty standard, pretty uncomplicated, got very complicated. We all have had to adjust to changing expectations now, at this time too. The parish staff scrambled for almost a week to change plans that had been put in place a month ago to try to reorganize things. People have had their work plans changed. Their daily gatherings moved and altered. Their patterns changed. Their income has been curtailed. Visits, planned trips have had to be canceled. This is not how we all expected to spend March and April this year. But notice Mary did not try to fight the changes to her plans. Her plans changed very quickly. She didn't try to fight them. She didn't pine, she didn't moan, she didn't argue with the angel. She didn't ask, why did God select her? She didn't demand that God give her something in return for her cooperation. She simply says, behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. She trusts God. She trusts that there's a greater plan and that God will ultimately protect, God will ultimately bring this greater plan about. Jesus' death might have seemed to her and others that God had dropped the ball on this one. Didn't seem to be working out. But again, one more time, God defies everyone's expectations and the resurrection comes. 
that was planned all along. This event of the incarnation of Jesus that we celebrate today is part of a fulfillment of God's promises to be with us. God had always promised that he would be with us and that there would be that presence, that support, that love, that power of God with us. It is God doing what God said, but in a way that no one expected. The incarnation. No one expected this was the way. When God speaks to the prophet in the first reading and says this, says, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and you shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Expectations that people had about how God would come to be with them. Expectations that for some that God would be this powerful warrior coming riding on a horse, smashing enemies, was replaced with the reality of a God who comes gently, quietly, as a little baby, and then sacrifices himself for love of us. No one understood that Jesus being called Emmanuel meant God would be with us in the flesh in this way. This is a way God being with us, different than anyone ever expected. The invisible God would come down to us deeply and personally to be with us. No one knew God would come down and take on a human body. I mean, they're expecting God is God. God's going to come down in this fiery presence. Not that God would do this thing, this you know, almost putting himself down in a way, becoming one of his creatures in that way, joining to that creature. Or that he would die and rise, and in that glorified body, after the resurrection, he'd be able to share that body over and over and over again in the Eucharist. It was the resurrection that transforms that body into that form, which we can experience now, 2,000 years later, physically experience the presence of God with us. And God with us in that way when we receive that Eucharist very powerfully. Mary knew about none of all of that. She knew about none of that she just trusted that God had some big plan going. And she said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Just do it. But you may say, Mary was saying yes to a plan that's this wonderful thing for humanity. But now, we face this pandemic that doesn't seem to be good at all for humanity. Yet, don't forget, God finds ways to use situations like this positively somehow. That is how God foils evils like illness. God is the power, and we heard in the gospel today, nothing, nothing is impossible with God. God has the power to take even an evil thing and turn it to good purposes along the way. We don't know how God will use this situation at this point, but neither did Mary know what was on the other side of the crucifixion. Did not know what was going to come from that. We know that God only creates and does good. God may allow illness to operate for reasons we don't fully understand, but when God does act, it is only to heal not to make sick. And God will act through this to protect and heal many people before this is over. We may focus on a number that ticks away on a newspaper or on, online that says how many people are sick, how many people have died. What is not being shown is the thousands that God has protected from the illness ever coming to them. Or those that were given a mild case by God's intervention of those who were healed completely who would have died. We don't have that number, but rest assured, it's big. 
in the face of uncertainty for the future, we can have that same faith that Mary did in the face of her uncertainty. Jesus himself follows the will of the Father through evils that were not of God's making. All of it that happened to him was not God making, creating, having these evils happen. He follows the will of God, and God turns things around in a way that was totally unexpected. In the second reading, the writer is reflecting that Jesus followed the Father's will and brought about reconciliation with the Father that was planned. He says, by this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. God's will only brings about an eventual good in the midst of evil for those who give themselves to it. Jesus follows the will of the Father and brings us salvation. Mary, a human like us, a human like us, follows God's plan and has this great privilege to be part of that plan. She is an example of faith, of allowing God to enter and to make a dwelling inside of her, a model of surrendering to the will of God when the future seems unsure. The key to greater peace and purpose is to turn to God in this time, this time that has disrupted our expectations. We should say with Mary, behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done to me according to your word. Behold, Lord, here I am. What do you need me to do? What do you want me to do at this time? How can I be part of your plan? By this surrender to God, we can find our part to play in the plan that God has to overcome evil. It's by surrendering to God's will, we find the peace of knowing that God can bring evil, good out of any evil, eventually. It's in this surrender that we can let go of these expectations we have. And really, it's our expectations that generate the fear that plagues us at this time. It's only by having true faith in the will and plan of God and surrendering to it that we will find that peace that we seek. Let us now together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from Through the faithful obedience of the Holy Virgin, God takes flesh among us. The mystery of the Incarnation calls us to pray through the Incarnate Son to our loving Father. That the Church may be seen as extending the Incarnation as the working body of Jesus Christ, 
Let us pray to the Lord. That people of goodwill may learn that Christ has united himself to every person in taking our human nature, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That scientists and researchers may work with noble ideals to further human dignity and happiness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That we may always reverence and protect the unborn infant, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that mothers carrying children in the womb will welcome the new life as Mary welcomed her son. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all parishioners of Annunciation Parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray during this time especially for all those who have fallen sick with the COVID-19 virus, all of those who are susceptible that they be protected. All those individuals who work to care for them, all those who work to find cures, all those who place themselves in risk for the good of others. We ask for their protection and prayers and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Father of the incarnate word, we bring our intentions before you, the fabric of our daily lives made holy by your son, our brother in the flesh, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering so that she who is aware of that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son may rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that the Christ was to be born among men and for men's sake by the overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. Lovingly, she bore him in her immaculate womb that the promises to the children of Israel might come about and the hope of nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. Story of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially when the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy to share the Lamb's life. Come and see the way of my soul shall be.
for all those who are watching this video and have not had the opportunity to receive our Lord in the Eucharist. I invite you now to pray along the act of spiritual communion by St. Alphonse Liguori and make a spiritual communion. If you don't have the actual prayer, then just listen and take and make these words your own. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his resurrection, merit to attain eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Before the final blessing, uh, in order to close our uh, novena uh, that we have been praying uh, leading up to this feast day, I invite you all to pray the Angelus with me. And you can respond at the parts when the Hail Mary comes in too. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. It is done unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. For forth we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts that as we have known the incarnation of your Son by the message of an angel, so by his passion and cross we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain forever. Amen. Now let us go in peace. The Mass is ended.